So I took a week to learn shaders using Unity's shader graph, and I have to say, it changed everything. The look and performance of my game improved so much in one week, uh, more than I ever thought possible in one week. In my last devlog, I showed you some graphical developments that I thought were pretty good, and while they were received kindly and seen by many to be an improvement, the comments were filled with suggestions, many of which I agreed with, um, on how to make the game even better. And almost all of them revolved around shaders. Before reading all those comments, uh, I had a very rudimentary understanding of what shaders were, what they're capable of. I knew that they could change how a game looked, but I didn't really know how to even start using them in my game or, or how they could change my game. So when I dove into shaders, I was surprised by how versatile they are. All of the different things you can do with shaders addressed so many of the issues that I had with the game, and as well as the many suggestions that I received in the comments. So for this devlog, I'd like to take you through some of the shaders that I used uh, and implemented into my game and how they changed my game completely. To begin, I built on the progress of the previous week and built a shader to animate the movement of the plants in the scene. I was informed through the comments that uh, using skeletal animation would be much worse for performance than using a shader that could accomplish something very similar. So using a vertex displacement uh, along a sine wave, the grass and the plants uh, now move gently in the mostly still water. The waving is more subtle than the larger motions being performed by the skeletal animations, which is appropriate for the relatively still pond environment. I understand there is a way to uh, make plants interactable as fish swim through them, uh, so that's something I would like to implement later on, maybe when I have a, a stronger grasp on shaders. The suggestion I got more than anything was adding caustics or water reflections to the scene. And looking at a real pond, you can see these reflections on the surface of the water and on anything underneath the surface. To make the water reflections, I connected a Voronoi node and changed the offset angle over time, causing these little cells to move around. As you can see, it's, it's as easy as that. Uh, this would work for both the water and the ground. But here I started to realize the real power of shaders. This caustic effect could be combined with colors and textures to create this effect on any surface that I needed. By changing the color of the reflections and the spaces between those reflections, I could create both the water and the ground surface reflections. The water surface needed something else though. Though it is a pond and the water is fairly still, I used another vertex displacement node to cause the water to move up and down gently. Uh, this is perhaps an exaggerated effect, but it makes sense for a video game. The textures I had made were very versatile. By adding some extra geometry to my rocks, I could easily make them look mossy, adding the shader I had made for the ground. Now everything looks as if it has the same green moss or algae growing on it. It just made sense that a pond would have green stuff growing everywhere. The only thing I might add to the mossy stuff is another vertex displacement so the texture doesn't look so smooth, especially on the rocks. The pond was looking much better than I ever expected it to. Better than I thought I was capable of, actually. And when I looked at it from a distance, it was deceptively realistic. I believe the caustic effect is really what does it. So thank you to everyone who suggested it. With the scene looking a lot more lifelike and vibrant, I was left with my fish which were now looking rather dull. The fish were always supposed to be the focal point, the most colorful of the objects of the game. So their coloring and texture needed an upgrade as well. Before learning about shaders, I was prepared to continue development of the game as it was, with simple colors and textures, or lack of, because I really don't have the experience to paint textures by hand. And I thought that was the only way. But seeing that shaders could create layers of texture procedurally, leaving me with flexible and changeable properties, shaders seemed an easy way, or a relatively easy way, to create all of the colors and textures uh, for all of my fish without adding a ton of development time or needing to get better at art. I knew the fish needed scales, and a few people in the comments had agreed with me. I had tried using normal maps of scale textures in Blender, but they weren't looking right, so I had abandoned them, uh, waiting for something else to reveal itself. As I was working with the other textures, I noticed that the Voronoi noise looked somewhat like scales. So that was my starting point. By rotating their offset and giving them a slight curve with a radial shear node, I had something that looked a lot like scales. I added properties to everything and tried it on the fish. I gave them a base color and an accent color, 
one that acts as sort of a shadow between the scales. Then, when I played with the strength of the color differences, the scales suddenly popped. I settled on this hint of a scale texture, where it seems like the round part of the scale is reflecting, and spaces between are in shadow. And zooming out, it has a nice effect. Looking at pictures of real fish, I was noticing these dapples of color, some light and some dark. So I overlaid some tiny speckles of color over the scales, and it created something fairly unique that I'm quite happy with. It's not 100% realistic, but thankfully that's not what I'm going for. I made some similar textures for the fins, giving them instead a ridged pattern and the ability to rotate in line with the fins. And the fish were looking complete. Using just these two shaders, I was able to recolor all of my fish just by changing the properties of these shaders. The last thing I tried was animating the fish using the shader. There are some really cool effects you can do with vertex displacement. I tried for hours, but something just wasn't working. I couldn't get the vertex displacements to combine in just the right way. Maybe it's too complicated for my novice brain to wrap around. So as I continue to learn, I'll consider coming back to it later. This was about as good as I could do using one layer of vertex displacement, but it wasn't quite good enough for me. I went back to the skeletal animation for the fish for now because it was much easier to make the fish move exactly how I wanted them to. And it's looking good for now. I said in the last devlog that I would introduce you to the four fish that I implemented in the game so far. So here they are. The minnow is a tiny fish with a lot of potential. Its evolution branches in three different directions and many more uh, beyond that. The minnow can follow three different diets. Following an herbivore diet, the minnow will change into a tetra. A carnivore diet will change it into a danio. And an omnivore diet will change it into a goldfish. These three are common aquarium fish and they are in the same fish family. So it only made sense to me that they would be related evolutionarily. Now, everything I have in this pond scene and all of the fish that I've implemented so far uh, have been applied with shaders. Feedback about the visuals is really important in this beginning stage of developing my game. So I wanna thank everyone that made suggestions in the comments uh, on things that I was able to implement in just a week. And as always, feedback is welcome on anything else you've seen in this video. The game is a lot closer to what I believe to be the final look of the game. I imagine I might come back to these shaders, maybe even the fish models and animations as time passes, but now that I have improved the visuals of the game dramatically, I believe it's time to press forward, uh, turning this little fish simulation into a real game. The next big milestone is turning this uh, first pond level into a playable demo. Uh, maybe amounting to about 15 minutes of gameplay. My last two videos have focused a lot on graphics, so I realize I haven't explained very well how the game is actually played. Since I'm switching my focus now to gameplay and making this into a playable demo, uh, my next video will expound upon what the gameplay is during this first level of the game and what my overall vision is for the game. As always, suggestions and feedback are more than welcome. I'm happy to implement anything that is within the scope of my game and within my abilities. I hope you enjoyed watching this devlog. Uh, if you missed any of the previous ones, here's a link to a playlist with all of my devlogs. Don't forget to subscribe. Click here to do that if you'd like to be notified when the next one comes out, which should be in about a week or two. Thanks for watching.